Okay, is it okay if I go ahead and uh, have people here introduce themselves and which library they're from? Who are you asking? Uh, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> we always ask Julia for permission. <laughs> no, I have it. I have it started. Okay. All right. So, hi, I'm Cassandra Thompson, the Share Program um, with IHLS. Hi, I'm Jeremy Steikhoff. I'm a library director at Cahokia Public Library. Sue Hookie, Millstadt Library. I'm Nicole. I'm interim director at Millstadt Library. I'm Elaine Steinberg. I'm the director here at Morrison Talbot Library. Thank you all for coming. I apologize for the small space. But next year, if you come back, we're going to have two new meeting rooms downstairs. So, construction, thanks to the Illinois State Library's construction grant. Yay. Yay! So that's very cool. And anybody who is here, and anybody who is out there listening and needs books, wants books, we have to clear all of our book sale books out of our basement. So please, please, please don't leave without books. No, oh, no problem. <laughs> I'm Tina Gibbard. I'm with the Six Mile Regional Library District. I'm Christy Garish. I'm with the Glen Carbon Centennial Library District. Brenda Gilpatrick, read the couplet. Tia Martell of Evansville Public Library. Ryan Johnson of Fallon Public Library. I'm Leslie Beth from Good Morning from Illinois Hartland Library System. I'm Ashley Stewart with Keithville Public Library District. Susan Palmer, Illinois Hartland Library System. Gina Reiner with the Mississippi Valley Library District. And I forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm Anna Yackel from Illinois Heartland Library System. And Julia, who do we have joining us via Zoom? All right. Online we have Cassandra Stewart from Sumter, Gloria Hendrickson from IEPA. We have Janet from Carlinville, Jen from Caseyville. We have Kim Keller, Laura Irwin from Hainer, Lynn Armstrong from Bla Blackburn. I'm sorry. Oh, Mary Cordes from Hainer, Matthew Hales, uh, Nicholas Waller, oh, Rachel Fowler from Urbana Free, Sarah Armstrong. We have <laughs> Shelley. Um, we have Sue Pearson from IHLS, Susan Mullen from Heron, Twyla Burton Coon from Mount Carmel, Johnny Halstead from Rick Warren, and oh, Matthews from Newman Regional. Um, and I think that's it right now. Okay. Um, so. We were all under the impression that Sarah was going to be here in person, but she's joining us via Zoom, which is wonderful. It's so nice to see your face. And I, I, this proves the story about libraries being a small world. My best friend is neighbors with Sarah's father. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's all interconnected. <laughs> And uh, Sarah has a real passion for strategic <laughs> planning, especially, and you know, she she noticed in her time on the Rails board and also on the ILA board that small libraries need strategic planning just as much as the big ones. And so she's kind of specializing in this now. So um, she has a lot of experience. She's uh, got all kinds of wonderful credentials to back up her experience too. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to her and let her start with her strategic planning speech. Uh, well, thanks, Anna, um, and thanks everyone for having me today. Uh, like Anna said, I'm a library consultant and I've been working with libraries for a number of years now to um, really help them better understand and better serve their communities as part of strategic planning projects. Um, my background is really in statistics and assessment and research. Um, I've fallen into the family business of working with libraries um, and a lot of the work that I do really involves community needs assessments and strategic plannings and again helping libraries um, better understand their communities. So I'm going to share my screen. I thought a PowerPoint would work a little better today. Let's see. Oh. 
the family. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Here we go. Um, so uh, I am looking forward to speaking with everyone about strategic planning because like Anna said, I do think that it's um, really necessary for libraries of all sizes and it's sometimes something that we um, dread in bad circumstances or just put off in others. Um, so when done correctly, strategic plans can really um, bring your board together, they can energize your staff, definitely bring in some new ideas and give your library uh, a great platform to not only solicit feedback, but to uh, clearly communicate what your library's goals for the future are. Um, the process doesn't have to be boring or drawn out, or isolating, it should really spark creativity and make you excited to work in libraries. Um, so like I said, today we're going to be talking about strategic planning, uh, specifically for small libraries, including what a strategic plan is, uh, how to know if your library is ready to start a planning process, and how to um, best get various library stakeholders, so your staff, your board of trustees, and community members involved in the planning um, for the future of your library. Hopefully, no matter what stage you're in within your library, you know, maybe you are thinking about starting a new planning process, um, or you know, maybe you're in the middle of implementing an existing plan and just want to learn more about what your next process can look like, how to involve data, and how to involve your community. Hopefully, this presentation will give you some ideas of how you can do that in a participatory way that uh, excites everyone involved. Uh, so, does your library actually need a strategic plan? Um, isn't this something for large organizations that are uh, more at risk of becoming unwieldy if they become unfocused? This is a question I hear all the time. Uh, why do we need to do this? This doesn't seem like something we need. We're doing fine. Um, and definitely, you are all certainly capable, smart professionals. Um, Judging from your libraries, you've had great ideas about how to move your libraries forward. But at the same time, for all of us, it's easy to fall into a pattern and assume all is well, everything is as good as it's always been. Um, and that's not a criticism, it's human nature. Um, and it does point to the value of a strategic plan, which is really about um, being intentional about checking the temperature of your communities and ensuring that your library is as relevant as possible, um, especially in the changing environment that we live in. Um, so putting together a strategic plan is really a sign that you're being thoughtful about the library's future. It's taking a step back from all the monthly reports to the board and, and asking yourself, um, what's next? What will we be doing in a few years? How will we describe ourselves? Uh, are we still fulfilling our mission? And you know, at that, what is our mission? Are we going to be facing any challenges in the future? Um, could we be doing anything better? Is there anything we actually don't need to be doing anymore? Um, there's the common assumption that strategic plans uh, are supposed to extend the library further and add work. And for small libraries, as you know, that's a huge hurdle to overcome. Um, but I, uh, my philosophy with strategic planning is, is that it's really about prioritizing your work based on the resources that you currently have, um, and then kind of deprioritizing what might not be working well. Uh, so it's important to have a solid foundation before you start a planning process to make sure that everything goes smoothly um, and that you can actually have fun. Um, a planning process, you might have participate in one in the past that has gone awry, it can discourage staff, it can alienate your board. Um, but, you know, most importantly, it can make um, people who participated question any ideas that might have come out of the process. Um, so what do I mean when I say it's important to have a solid foundation? Uh, your first step, of course, is to determine whether your library already has a strategic plan. And that might sound ridiculous, but um, you'd be surprised how many don't know. Um, if you do have a plan, what does the board think about it? How long ago was it looked at? If it's been a long time, then how do you make your big picture decisions? Um, also, if you, have, if you do have a current strategic plan and you're aware of where it is, is it useful? Um, do you and your staff and your board refer back to it as you make decisions? Um, or does it look something like this, uh, thrown on a shelf? 
um, a symbol of potential dread going through another process just to fill another binder. Um, strategic plans should be useful. Uh, this is also an important time to ask yourself what your library's mission is. Um, you know, maybe as um, directors and leaders in your library, you know what your mission is, um, but does anyone else, does your staff know? What about the board? Um, because if, if they don't know, then the community certainly doesn't and you're not using it to make decisions. Um, when you do start a planning process, uh, your board members and sometimes staff, and this will be public library focused, uh, are often, um, again, human nature, not interested in changing something that they see is currently working well, or even changing something that they feel they don't know much about. And we see that more and more as libraries rapidly change. Um, so uh, again, this is about leading and inspiring your board and staff. Um, keep them involved with stories about how the library has impacted someone's life. Keep them aware of what other libraries are doing. Um, just like today, visit a library that's not your own. See, see what else other libraries are doing to gain perspective. Um, and regarding the point about your board being engaged, trustees should be fully invested in the planning process. <clears throat> they should understand what their role is, that implementation is up to the staff, um, but they should also understand why the planning process is occurring. Uh, how will work be delegated? What is the time span that the plan will cover? Um, and who is going to be an active representative of the board as you start gathering input? Um, when, it's, uh, when asked in, a, in an intentional and thoughtful way, your board and your staff can be huge resources. They often have uh, very similar visions of where the library should go and asking them um, what they think will be will help you uh, be able to communicate those ideas to a wide range of audiences within your community. So um, what does a strategic planning process actually look like? Um, starting with collecting and analyzing data and then soliciting community feedback. Um, what I mean by this is as anything that indicates how people are using your library. Hopefully it goes beyond your basic circulation data and maybe um, how people are using your space, um, what, how your programs are being filled, um, that kind of thing. Just over time, how has that changed and, and what does that indicate for the future? Um, so then we move on to seeking input from your staff and board members. Uh, including these st steps really helps uh, ensure that the plan that you're ultimately going to come up with is responsive to these uh, and feedback that you've collected. Um, these components can talk about how people currently use the library. Um, you can look at into barriers to using the library, um, but also what the community is looking to the library for in future library service. Um, from there, we move on to the second phase of the library strategic planning process where we develop those goals and strategies that you're going to use. Uh, so this can look a little bit different for each library and we'll talk about it a little bit later, um, but the library staff and board would work together here to reach consensus on um, overarching goals and strategies. Um, it's also at this point here that uh, it would be helpful to revisit your library's mission statement. After those broad goals and strategies are developed, it can be um, useful to you and your staff certainly to develop more specific action steps and measurable outcomes that will communicate the degree of progress toward your new plans, goals, and strategies. Um, it's here that um, I see boards kind of wanting to get involved, but this is really the staff's expertise and your expertise, especially in small libraries. Um, you know your libraries the best, you know, your budgets and your resources, and this is really staff's time to shine. Um, once you have a strategic plan written down and it's approved by your board, you of course begin implementing it. Um, but in this cycle, it really shouldn't be your last step. It's important um, always to measure progress toward your goals. And that doesn't always have to be um, quantitatively. I think we, I think the profession um, relies a lot on quantitative data and that's great and over time it can certainly paint a pic picture of how people are using the library, but one story can communicate the impact of a library um, better than any chart could. Um, so an example I use with boards is I was conducting a focus group for a library 
um, with a group of residents and a woman in her 60s came and she didn't speak through most of the focus group. She was pretty quiet. Um, and at the end, she said, I just had I just have one thing I want to share with everyone. Um, so she's in her 60s and all through her life, she's been checking out children's books. Um, she has a difficult time reading and she didn't feel confident or familiar enough with the library to venture into the adult section. Um, so that, you know, a few months ago, I worked up the courage to ask a staff member about a book recommendation. I'm going on vacation with my husband for our anniversary and I want to read a, a real adult book. Um, the staff member helped her uh, select Dolly Parton's autobiography. Um, she finished it cover to cover and since then she had read five additional adult nonfiction books. Um, and it's a heartwarming story, but I use it because it shows that um, in a chart or on paper, that would show up as six circulations. But when you look into the story, um, it's hugely impactful. The library changed her life, and this wouldn't have happened with any other organization in her community. It wouldn't have happened if she used a bookstore. Um, it happened because of the resources and the expertise available at her public library. So um, when you talk about measuring progress toward goals, it's easy to um, say we want to increase our program attendance 10% or something like that. But don't forget about the people behind the actions that you're taking. Um, so, uh, like I mentioned earlier, strategic planning is a great way and great time to engage your community. Um, one of the most common and one of the best ways I find to um, find out where, where people are and uh, what motivates them is to ask them. So there are, of course, several options you can take to do this. There are surveys, um, which can give you input from a large number of community members. Uh, focus groups, which allow for more in-depth conversations. Uh, stakeholder interviews are becoming much more common and that gives identified key members of your community an opportunity to provide pretty significant input and context into your planning goals. And then um, these more informal conversations, maybe you've heard of um, like the kitchen table conversations through the Harwood program that ALA did a few years ago. Um, those could be between staff and community members, trustees and community members. Each of these options really has its own strengths and I usually recommend um, kind of a combination between a couple. So maybe you want to do a survey that has more of that quantitative data and follow up with um, a conversation or interviews to give uh, depth and variety of feedback. Uh, another point that I think is unique to um, small libraries, um, whether it's a small town or the geographic area served by a small library, um, board members, as you know, are often involved on boards of other community organizations or maybe they volunteer with other groups. So um, maybe you have a board member who's also a coach of a youth baseball team. Maybe they're in Kiwanis or volunteer at a historical society. You can use those connections pretty effectively to engage people outside of of your library's group of, of heavy regular users and you can get a better feel for how the community perceives the library by um, using your board members to reach out to these potential non-users. Um, so how can we involve our staff? Um, but this quote, the library is the worst group of people ever assembled in history. They're mean, conniving, rude, and extremely well-read, which makes them dangerous. Um, despite what Leslie Nope says, I think we can all agree that library staff are great. Um, like I gave in my example, they um, answer all kinds of questions, often completely outside your job descriptions. They ensure the day-to-day -day operations of the library run smoothly. Um, on top of that, uh, library staff quickly respond to changing trends in library usage, but most importantly, they know the library, they know the community, and they know the loyal user base better than anyone else. Um, so given that, staff should really play a key role through the entire planning process. Um, from the very beginning, staff should have access to the data you looked at regarding library usage and analysis. Um, maybe that ex explains trends or surprises in higher communities using the library. I'm always surprised when um, library 
maybe it's a library director who collects this or a board member and um, the rest of the staff isn't even necessarily aware of what that data is showing. Um, in addition, whether you decide to have focus groups or maybe you decide to do those key stakeholder interviews, it's really essential that you consider staff feedback as well as community feedback. Um, I've done staff focus groups, maybe it's an informal conversation with staff, um, but giving them a chance to uh, provide ideas about changes the library imp can implement um, is really important. Um, like I said, staff have this expertise that no one else does, but looking on the back end of strategic planning, they're the ones who are going to be implementing the plan. So it's really important to get their feedback and get their buy in um, throughout the process. So um, they don't not only do they just feel engaged, but that they are and they're having an impact on what the plan actually says. Along those same lines, um, friends groups and library foundations are a pretty unique act asset to libraries that um, we haven't talked too much about yet, but as you know, um, members of friends groups and those involved in foundations are volunteers from your community um, and therefore their position as not just um, residents and users of the library, but residents who actually feel strongly enough about the library that they volunteer their time and they volunteer their resources to help advance its future um, gives them a unique standing. It's important to not only ask these groups, what their perspectives are about the library during a planning process, but to also find out um, what motivates them to serve in this capacity. Uh, often that can speak to your unique strengths as, as a library in your community. Um, often, as you know, these are longtime volunteers. You can ask them what's changed since they first inv got involved in the library, and that can be eye opening. Um, what's improved? What have their family members, friends, or viewers communicated them about the library? Uh, your friends and foundation can be, really be a wealth of information. Um, so, mistakes to avoid when planning. Some of the common mistakes I see when I work with libraries on strategic planning process projects are um, entering the process with the mindset that you know more than your community members, that you know for certain what the library's strengths and weaknesses are, and um, that there is no community feedback that would surprise you. Again, human nature. Um, even if that's the case, even if the data you collect through a survey does reaffirm what you already know, there is value in reaching out to the community um, you serve beyond the hope that they're gonna tell you something new. Um, it, strategic planning is a great tool for community engagement. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've done a survey and had someone write in the margins, I didn't know you offered that, I didn't know about this. Um, surveys are a great way to collect information, but to also push out things that you're doing that people might not already know about. Um, so similarly, there's significant value to collecting and openly accepting negative feedback, which nobody likes. Nobody likes to hear negative comments. Um, but don't be one of those libraries whose surveys only include questions that would result in positive answers. Um, I'm sure we've all seen um, things like that. Uh, but negative feedback is really not something to be scared of. You should embrace it um, unless you're doing something uh, spectacularly wrong, which I'm sure you're not. Um, surveys <laughs> over and over again show how much uh, people love their libraries. Your community will certainly value your library, but um, there may be specific aspects of library service that could be improved. And hearing those comments will help you address them in a more straightforward and proactive way. Um, and then lastly, this is really fundamental and perhaps obvious, but it's worth stating. Um, make sure that the strategic plan that you develop is one that you will actually use. Um, I don't know how many of you are one of those people who make to-do lists and include items that you've already done, um, just to get that satisfying feeling of crossing it off. But uh, <laughs> we- I like that idea. <laughs> Um, please try to resist that temptation to do it with your library strategic plan. Um, often I'll see libraries put together strategic plans and then cross off items the following week. So it's not really serving its purpose. Um, it should really be a document that guides your library forward in a long term way, something that you can refer back to, um, something that will help 
you know, basically help you make decisions going forward, not as a checklist of things to do. Um, I'm often asked, and we touched on this a little bit earlier, uh, whether strategic planning is a good time for boards and libraries to revisit their mission statements. And the answer is an enthusiastic yes. Um, not only does the planning process give you this new context for the role that the library is playing within your community, but um, developing a new strategic plan very much aligns with um, what could be a small marketing campaign to refresh your library's image, reach out to new users. Um, put simply, a mission statement is going to put into words what your library aims to do or be to the community, and it just aligns perfectly with a new strategic plan. Um, Mission statements answer the question, uh, what do you do? When you think about it, you can think about how you want to describe your library in three years when it's doing its best work. Um, so uh, words like engage, empower, enrich, connect, communicate, collaborate, these are all words that we commonly see in mission statements for public libraries. Um, at the same time, some libraries develop vision statements that answer the question, what do you aspire to be in the future? Um, that's kind of up to the individual library. I don't always think that they're necessary. I don't think they're used very often. And if you do an effective strategic planning process, you're really already answering this question about what do you aspire to be. So um, we've you know, talk to the board, we've gotten input from staff, and we have reached out to our community to find out what they think about the library. Um, how do we put everything together? This process could look different at each library. You know, each of your structures are different, your cultures are different. As individuals, you as leaders are different. Um, sometimes the board might want to take an active lead in compiling and organizing this information into more um, concrete goals and objectives. Uh, in larger libraries. Um, this is often completed by a planning team, which could comprise, you know, a variety of stakeholders, but small libraries just um, unfortunately don't have that luxury. So um, in small libraries, it's often worthwhile to form a small committee of one or two staff members and a trustee who's been engaged throughout the process um, to, to start, um, you know, digesting some of this data that you've gotten and see what the implications are in terms of what your goals will be. Um, regardless of the makeup of the team guiding the process, you know, maybe your whole board wants to do it and that's fine. It's just important to communicate um, internally to make sure that um, everyone who wants to be involved is. So if you have staff members who want to participate in writing your goals, definitely involve them. It will make the process um, much more collaborative and it will just ensure that your plan is um, more successful moving forward. So I wanted to include um, a couple examples of um, plans that use this more modern approach to uh, using uh, feedback from various stakeholders and funneling it into um, a document with broad goals and strategies. You can see here that um, this easily communicates the library vision for the future, um, not only for the public, but also to the staff and the board. You know, we talked about the strategic plan needing to be usable. Um, so this is a high level dynamic document that provides um, the overall impetus for action, but it doesn't necessarily need to spell out every step taken in that cause, right? We don't want a to-do list, we don't want a checklist. Um, in general, I like to keep strategic plan documents to one to two pages. Um, small enough to say double-sided on one piece of paper or have a copy posted at each staff member's desk. Uh, it's easy to hand out to the board. You can make it into a poster. You can include it in a newsletter, um, you know, whatever. It's easily communicated to everyone involved. Um, that being said, um, you can definitely have something behind the scenes where you lay out what your action steps are going to be to accomplish these kinds of things. Um, this is really a public facing document that you can share that is responsive to the community feedback and the staff feedback that you received. So this is just one example. Um, here's a second that um, the content is similar, but it's just formatted in a slightly different way. Um, you can see on the first page, the goals are um, easily identified, and on the second page, they're described in a little bit more detail. Um, 
again, this is something that you could easily hand to uh, a school board to say, here's what the library is doing, or another community organization that you might be working with. Um, it's, Can you see who that's from? I'm sorry. Can you see who that's from? Uh, which oh, library? library? This is an Ella Johnson. Johnson. Yep. yep. Uh, Ella Johnson. So, um, what's what's next? Um, I've heard that the phrase that strategic plans in Wake represent a social contract with your community, and it's a nice way to think about it. Um, they really outline the interface between. Um, you know what the public needs and wants and the library's response to those needs. Um, it's it's crucial to communicate to, to your public even in a small community after you've put together a strategic plan. So I don't know if anyone has taken um, like a, a poll online um, and you click your answer and then the best part of that is finding out how you compare it to other people who took it, right? Um, so there's no point in doing a survey of your community if you're not then going to communicate the results of it and how you're planning on responding to it. Um, perhaps especially in a small community where you play such a strong role and the libraries are really um, pillars and cores of the community more than in larger municipalities. Um, so you can use your strategic plan to show that you've listened, that you're aligning the library's operations with the results of that listening. Um, and now is really your chance, once you have a strategic plan that's formatted in a way that is engaging, um, to show how relevant your library is. So if you ever get a question about why we need libraries when there's Google, you can use this to show all these things that you're doing and all these things that you plan to do that are responsive to what your community said. Um, and then lastly, determine how you're going to evaluate success. So that was one of the stages in the life cycle of strategic planning. Create measurable action steps that can be reported back to the staff, um, reported back to the community. Maybe it's in a, um, a flyer that you post in the library. Um, really anything that's showing that you listened and you're responding and you're succeeding and this is what you did. Um, so I'm always happy to take questions from libraries about their strategic plans and different options. Like I said, um, different libraries handle planning in a variety of ways. Some go totally in-house, um, others hire a facilitator like me for more end-to-end -end service um, from survey development to data gathering to running focus groups, um, working with the director and staff to develop those annual targets and evaluation tools. Um, but like Anna said, I also have seen um, that in smaller libraries, cost is such a concern with strategic planning, um, even though it is so important that small libraries consider this as, their, as part of their operations. Um, they have such a great impact in their community and sitting down and, and being thoughtful about what you're going to be doing in the next few years is so important. Um, I have put together a coaching model for small libraries where cost is a concern, where um, I can help you through a strategic planning process. Um, but regardless of that, I'm happy to talk with any library about um, any of these options or any other planning questions you might have. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions now. Will you be sharing this PowerPoint? Oh, sure. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions? How about uh, Julia? Are any is anyone asking questions from um, our people who are connecting via Zoom? We uh, does anyone have an example of a survey? This is Susan Mullen from Heron. Hmm. Um, so I can share the PowerPoint and, and an example of uh, a report that I put together so you can kind of see the types of things that were asked in a survey that way, um, if that would be helpful. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Sarah, how do you, how do you deal with boards that may not see the point of doing this or they feel like you know, we've done it this way forever. We're little. Nobody really pays attention to what we're doing. You know, we know the community. How do you how do you overcome some of those objections when you talk about strategic planning? Um, 
Great question. So I started off as a public library trustee and served on a board like this. Um, so I like to tell directors there, I've seen there have been very few things that are as influential as visiting another public library. Um, especially with small libraries, I feel like it's pretty common to only have visited the one in your town. Um, and it's the same case in the suburbs, you know, people will use their district library and not really understand what's going on around them. Um, so, so even volunteering to go to another library, take your, take your trustee with you, um, can open their eyes to what other libraries are doing and excite them to bring those things to your community. Um, if they're not willing to do that, then I've been pretty honest and just ask, um, you know, here are the challenges that are facing public libraries right now. Here is how we're funded. And in the state of Illinois, um, here's what's on the table. Uh, here's the political climate we're in. What does it look like if we don't exist? Um, or if we're completely irrelevant? What if our building only has encyclopedias? Um, what's the point? So taking kind of a draconian um, approach to it can also work with board members as well. But the most effective thing I've seen is showing them what other communities are doing and um, how engaged some, some communities really are with their public libraries. Yes, Susan. Hi. Um, I had written down some notes, and now I'm at a loss as to what they mean. I had written that uh, you need your mission statement, but you may not need your vision statement. Mm -hmm. If you have a good mission statement, was that a true uh, note that I took? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. Um, yeah, vision statements are fine. I just, I don't often see them use very much other than just posting it on the about page of your website. Um, and if that's the case, it can be such a struggle to come up with them that I don't know that that is the most effective use of your time. Um, so I found if libraries have a singular strong mission statement, they will use that and refer back to that, um, you know, and make it worthwhile. But a vision statement, unless, unless you see a specific need for it, it's not, you know, certainly as relevant as a mission. Thank you. Sure. Um, I see that most of the things you had are like uh, three years, you know, like, is that like the average that you would recommend for a strategic plan's life or? Yeah, so I leave it up to the individual board. Um, the average in the industry is definitely around three or four years and no longer. Um, I, I do see, that being said, I do see plans when it relates to your facility um, for much longer than that, long-term capital plans and that kind of thing. But in terms of a strategic plan, three to four years is, is pretty consistent, especially with just how quickly it's changed in libraries now. Can I say something about that? I did at a conference and um, Effingham specifically, if I recall correctly, spoke about revisiting your strategic plan every six months um, because of how rapidly your climate is changing. So I wanted to ask, how do you, what are your thoughts on revising your mission statement? How often should a library look at a mission statement? On revising the mission statement? Mm -hmm. Um, I would, I would um, definitely at least talk about it each time you put together a strategic plan, um, a strong mission statement, you really shouldn't have to change that often. Um, it should be uh, phrased in a way that that changes with the times um, that you know can incorporate new technology into your services without having to change your mission statement. Um, but it's nice to at least talk about it, especially with your board on a periodic basis. And that seems to align nicely with when you put together a strategic plan. Um, at the same time, when you are putting together your strategic plan goals, they should relate back to your mission, right? So it just makes sense to revisit it every three years as you would be doing a plan. Well, speaking as a staff okay. member, um, for um, uh, Illinois Heartland, we recently created a strategic plan and there was a lot of input from the staff and then it's come back to us where each department has goals and then each individual has goals that meet those goals and 
it's really kind of reassuring to know that we all have the same vision and we're all working towards the same goals. It makes it a lot clearer in what I do because I see other things I can pull in. And if I know, you know, where I'm going, it helps me in my daily functions to operate more efficiently. So I think it's helpful if you can do that and get that total buy-in of both the board, the staff, and the community. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I actually have a question online. Uh, Shelly is asking, how should you share your strategic plan with someone? She did the steps a little backwards, came up with a preliminary plan, then went over with the board, then went over it with staff. How does she go and share it with the community now for feedback? Facebook, email, et cetera? Oh, that's a great question. Um, off the top of my head, without seeing it, I would think um, if, if your library has um, a, kind of like a robust email distribution list, which not everyone does, um, and an online survey is an option, um, you could ask questions that relate to what you've included in your draft plan without having to share the draft itself. Um, uh, so, so maybe you ask, um, maybe in your plan you have a goal related to marketing or something like that. You could ask on a survey um, something like how, how would you prefer to hear information or news from the library. So you could um, relate it that way and then make revisions according to what your community said through a survey. Um, alternatively, you could um, have I love having focus groups with leaders of community organizations, not just because they are, are in tune with what's going on, but because they often represent um, residents or um, other community members who might not use the library. So they kind of have a different perspective than if you were to only talk about talk to your library users. Um, so bringing a draft to them in kind of a focus group setting might be worthwhile to see what they think as well. Um, Jen from Caseyville is asking, can you offer some examples of strategic plans that do not include building expansion? Sure. So um, I can include a few things, too, uh, plans, especially for smaller libraries that I've worked with that, that don't have that on the table um, when I share the other stuff with you guys. Uh, Shelly's also asking, how do you get people to come to focus groups? Uh, you feed them. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Offer That's true. refreshments and water and they will come. <laughs> in, in conjunction with that, is there a better day of the week or time of the day that is better for those? Because people are busy. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so plan out far in the future. Um, if you want to have focus groups with residents, you will need to have one during the weekday and at least one on a weeknight or on a Saturday morning. Um, it's important to get perspectives from all different types of community members and limiting it to people who don't work during the day, you know, isn't serving anyone's interests. Um, so I would rule out Fridays. Uh, Mondays aren't great because people forget about them. Uh, but like this time on a Tuesday morning is perfect. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I think that's it for us uh, here, Sarah. So uh, you can either continue with us or if you'd like to uh, exit the, the meeting now, you can do that too. Sure. I'll take off. Thank you for having me and thanks for the great questions. I will send um, everything you mentioned and she's welcome to share it with whoever is interested. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for joining us. Okay, um, now we will do our usual uh, agenda items, and I'm going to have Leslie talk about the system. Okay. Oh. How about I? Can you hear me from here? I know the cord will reach to you. It's just a matter of moving it. Just sit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want the? There you go. Thank you. 
probably easier if I just come up one row instead of two and knock everybody else down. Good morning. Um, I hope you can hear. Is it sound okay, Julia? Talking loud enough? Yes, we can hear you fine. Thank you, ma'am. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I just have a couple things I'd like to mention. Um, the first one is uh, we don't talk about this very much because... Well, it hasn't been an issue, but I do think it's important to mention that at this point, um, as of yesterday, we re yesterday the library system received three checks totaling um, one million ninety-five thousand five hundred dollars. So that brings us to eighty-nine percent, roughly, of our fiscal nineteen system airing per capita grant um, award. That's significant for us. It's significant in a lot of ways. One because yesterday was July 1st, just one day into the fiscal year um, 2020. That also is significant because this that means the state is really getting caught up, I think, on its backlog. Um, I know we have folks at the, um, there's Rita at the State Library. Hi, Rita. Hi. <laughs> so she may be able to speak to that a little more. Um, that is significant. Um, so we just have um, one additional payment hanging out there, I think it's $365,000 and change. Um, and being at 89% this far, um, this close to the end of the fiscal year 19, which would have been on Friday, is is super for us. Um, we generally have, that lapse year generally goes a couple of months after the end of a fiscal year. So we, soup, we absolutely appreciate that um, and all the help and um, um, assistance from our colleagues at the Illinois State Library so thank you very much for that that helps us um, continue what we do to serve our members so woohoo for that second of all I'd like to point out something that I believe was in our newsletter I hope so and that, that just went out yesterday so you may not have had an opportunity to see it the Public Library Association is uh, presenting a symposium in it's only held three times this year and actually one's already been held um, it's called Social Justice and Public Libraries. Equity Starts With Us. It'll be held in October in Chicago at the Chicago Public Library, um, Library Harold Washington branch, October 28 and 29. That was in there, correct? Yes. I did see that. Oh, good. I thought I'm, I'm streaming. Okay. It's limited to 100 participants. There is a cost um, to participate in the symposium. There is also a cost for... Um, travel obviously for all of us um, in central and southern Illinois. If you are able to send someone and are interested, I would encourage you to register soon because I, I believe it will fill up rather quickly. Um, that If that's something of interest um, to you or someone at your library. Just want to point that out. Just Get that out there while you're thinking about CE for the year. Um, and then the last thing that I, I would like to talk just a little bit about, I want to touch on. Um, there's also something in our newsletter, and you may have already seen it, and I've already we've already received comments about, um, in a good way, um, that about Eleanor Heartland Library System um, being able to provide CE. Um, or restarting CE. I, I want to clarify that just a little bit um, and so that I don't think any of you have a misconception. I just want to go on the record. We're, we're providing continuing education beyond what we already do in resource sharing related to delivery, related to interlibrary loan, related to circulation training or cataloging training um, in SHARE. So, I don't think that anyone in this room or anyone that's participating via Zoom or our members, um, I hope, aren't getting that message. Yeah, it's my job to be <laughs> um, the person that, that kind of frames everything. I hope that that's clear, though. Um, I hope no one got that impression that we weren't. Um, and it is in our strategic plan um, that was approved in October 2015 by our board. We had to shelve it for a couple of years due to financial um, challenges. And now we're, we've um, got that going again. It is something that um, our staff and our board um, have taken seriously. And we did have a survey that went out this spring. We got a lot of feedback from members about um, what you would like to see us tackle, excuse me, in the next few years. Again, that's the strategic plan kind of thing that uh, Sarah was just talking about. 
um, in three years, you know, what will things look like? Um, what kinds of things would our members like to see? We first addressed this as a staff when we were re, um, working on our operational plan for the FY20 system area per capita grant for that. There's an operational plan within that. That's separate from our strategic plan. Every year we have an operational plan for that grant. So, um, like I said, we had a, we took that operational plan apart this year and kind of re took a new look at it. Um, there are things that we can do. There are things that our staff um, are experts in. There are subjects that we can present on with limitations. And so those limitations are time <laughs> and away from other things, other services we already provide. Um, with a little bit of creativity and ingenuity, we may be able to do that on a little broader scale. So that was our first thought about providing um, continuing education beyond what we already do. We're also interested in what our members have, um, what our members are interested in learning about or what you need from us. We have had, we did get some actually um, excellent feedback when we had um, members in our building for the continuing education training for um, design thinking, if any of you were there for um, in July 12th and 13th, no, June 12th and 13th. So there was some really good feedback because we happened to have some members working with us. Come on in. So um, that also gave us some really good feedback about what members are looking for. Um, so I don't know if any of you now or anybody online has any thoughts, if you've had an opportunity to read that. Um, anybody? I would just like to say today is an excellent start. OK. I mean, personally, I good. appreciate topics. Like, like Sarah's presentation? Yeah. Good. That's excellent, thank you. I mean, excellent to hear, not yeah. that we did it, but excellent to hear, thank you. Leslie, we actually, yes. I think online had a problem hearing that. You had a problem hearing, you want to speak up, say it again? Oh, I just, all I said was that I thought today was a great start. <laughs> I think topics like, you know, strategic planning and um, social justice and so those are wonderful things for us that we don't necessarily think about every single day, but important nonetheless to be educated on. Did you get that? Julia? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just real quickly to address the, mem the thing about Members Matter, Jamie, um, we've talked about doing this, and so this was a purposeful um, start I think if I can say that Anna yeah okay yeah a new a new approach I guess to members matter this this time but we also and not but we need to know what other things people want to know about so Anna's the lady who wants to know exactly what um, members want to know about and so if it fits in this kind of a format for learning we'll do everything we can to bring it here I believe last time we did this, we had the census. Was Joe Natale? Is that when Joe was here? Was that two months ago? We were at the State Library, seems like. Um, and that was timely. And we may have to touch on the census probably again. I would imagine we would. And uh, that may not be, well, I, is a topic I think we have to approach uh, again. Um, any others like that? And and it won't only be in this format. I mean. Yeah. Leslie? Yes? Uh, Shelly is saying she concurs. Uh, more presentations on things that can relate to everyone, big or small. Stuff for rural libraries is great because a lot of times the presentations and workshops focus more on bigger libraries. OK. Something back Do you here. hear me, Tarki? I can, just um, a little bit. Go I ahead. would love a training of like HR topics, Department of Labor, compliance issues, um, mm -hmm. something like that that 
because I don't have an HR background, but I would love, you know, anytime there's updates with the state, like what posters do I need, need to hang up in our workroom and <laughs> okay. all of that. So. I'm the only one. <laughs> okay. So I think that, um, did you everybody hear? Um, no, 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 you're not on. Um, she would like something, the comment was she'd like something on HR, um, Department of Labor, compliance issues, what posters to hang up in um, their staff room. I do think that's something that we can accommodate on a surface level fairly easy because that is something that I was actually in a meeting about in, in our little, what are we called, Julia? Something five, five, we all. High five? No, no, anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we had, when we were doing our, our um, admi um, operational plan and we broke up into groups, um, our administrative staff, there's five of us, I think, and we kind of don't fit into any other group. We don't fit into finance. We don't fit into share. We don't fit into delivery. We don't fit into membership. Although membership's team is kind of small too. Maybe they'd take us on. But there's five of us, none of which do anything that the other one does. And so we gave ourselves a name, but I've forgotten already. So um, we all have different titles. And um, we actually talked about that because HR is one of our, is one of our titles. So our, one of our group. And um, we have one HR person. And that's one of those things where um, we have lots of ideas and lots of things we'd like to share. And we also have to be very cognizant of the fact that we have one HR person and a little over 100 FTE. So the things that we do want to share would have to be very broad and very surface, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we would be happy to do that. And she has lots of great ideas. So, and she's currently not in the office, so she won't be hearing me say this. Um, and I will talk to her when, when we're back together. Hey, but I think that's great. I'll second that, because an overview of some of the things like the FEMLA, what do you do with this, mm -hmm. how does that go, how many people, how long did somebody be out, all of those kinds of things. Does it run concurrently with vacation and sick time? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things like that I think would be extremely helpful um, possibly even what do you do if someone files for unemployment where you and you don't feel it's appropriate where you start some of those kinds of things like that some of the things that pop up that you really aren't prepared to be dealing with yeah, I, I have also thought about this in relationship to trustee training mm -hmm. because I think the trustees really need at least some sort of understanding, a basic understanding of employment and HR things. I know that that's really falls under the director's purview, but I think it's important for them to understand all of these things. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can double dip on this one. We can get trustee okay. and our, our members trained on these issues. And as far as that goes, who does it apply to? Because if you're under 50 employees, then right. it doesn't really Yeah, apply. that's another good point. Although we, we have incorporated ourselves into our own employee handbook. Well, exactly. And then if you hit your municipal library, it doesn't apply to you because of your city. Right. So Correct. All factor into it. Right. Those, those kinds of things would be, I think, beneficial to know. Correct. Before you're in the middle of it. Okay. Shelly actually has something interesting. She would like a presentation on how to say no to the board. Um, she's learning on that one. It can be hard to say no when all we want to do is please them. Sometimes her board unintentionally blurs the line between her job and theirs. <laughs> okay, I think that's good. That's an that's an intriguing topic, but a necessary one. Wow, where would we go looking for someone like that? That's also a very that could also be a potentially good presentation at something like member day okay. although I think member day may be already booked I don't I don't know but because um, it would be a panel kind of a, I could see it as a panel thing I'm not on the member day committee so I have lots of suggestions for them but I'm not on that committee so um, <laughs> Anna's like well, yes 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 yeah, so um, okay <laughs> because you don't have a choice <laughs> Yes. Could we incorporate in something like that 
that a new board member and existing board members are required to see some of these videos? I mean, you can have them, but I know I'm leading the horse to water. Okay. <laughs> Is that possible? So we at Illinois Harlan Library System membership standards in our in the library system are set by the Library System Act and the Act and the administrative rules. So the those requirements are not that strict. Could it be looked into? <laughs> I, I'm not ready to give up. <laughs> you have to talk to your legislature. Okay, you have to go that high. Yeah. To require but you could board say to members. Your board members yeah, look, in the per capita grant, it says we have to do this, so you need to watch this video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell me when you've watched Which it. I have done. You yes. could, yeah. <laughs> That's good. There is another way. I'm going to say there, there are other ways to get that. them to do it. To get around that little mm -hmm. legislator. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't have to go that route, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't come from the, it's not coming from the system from per se oh. for a membership. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. So, yes, we do all have to follow the law, though. Under, you know, so nuts. It limits us. Nuts. <laughs> but there are ways that you can phrase it. Yes. Right. You know, we have to do this for our per capita grant. Yeah. So you need to watch this <laughs> and tell me when you've watched it so I can note it. Okay. Yeah. Or start the okay. board meeting with it. I guess yeah. Start the board meeting. Tina's going to be on our panel. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm, like Elaine said, I'm pretty assertive with my board. You have to watch this. <laughs> yeah. So that I can w w write down that you watched it. Tina, yeah. are you volunteering to do a presentation for us? <laughs> <laughs> You need somebody softer than me, too. <laughs> no, you don't. That's the problem. I think they're going to bring you to Milstad. I think that's the... Yeah, I've got your name down, Tina. Okay. okay. Elaine, would you like to join? <laughs> Thanks. I'm sitting next to you. That'd be fun. Anything else, Julia? If not, I will... Um, I'm going to yield to Cassie. I don't have anything right at the moment. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move along to, to Cassie and Cher. And Julia, can you hear me okay? Good. I can hear you. You're a little soft. Okay, we're moving the microphone. Is that better? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right, so one of the things that we've been working on with the Share program is a new book club kit program where members will build and house book clubs to be shared among members and so we've purchased a software that's a reservation system to make this work and so we've been um, working with a group of some of our member libraries to form a committee to come up with some um, some workflows and work out some of our uh, best practices and so we're ready to actually start testing out this program and so I'd like to just reach out to our members so if anyone has um, groups of collections uh, for book clubs that they've got a set of materials that they'd like to see turned into a book club kit and would like to help us pilot some of these program uh, this program we would love to hear from you so please reach out to me if you've got um, some materials that you'd like to participate in this kind of a pilot of this program and because we are um, getting closer to beta testing it so we are really excited about that we also have you all um, participated in the vote for the new logo that will be released next week and so you will see your packs um, change over to show that new logo if you do not already have a customized um, pack portal page. So if you do, and I'm going to pick on um, O'Fallon because I believe that you guys have customized your portal page. What you can do is reach out to me and get a copy of our new logo if you'd like to incorporate it and then just send us the new JPEG and we can send you some instructions on doing that so it will um, reflect the sh new share logo as well as your custom logo as well. And so um, I also had a great question, again, putting people on the spot, Christy, 
had asked about the jet pay integration that is coming up with the update to 6.3 the development has been completed for jet pay but that update has not yet been released by Polaris but as soon as it is we will be setting a um, an upgrade date and we'll also follow the same kind of process that we did for the 6.2 update to show you some of the new features because that will not be the only um, new feature in Polaris so we'll show you some of the uh, different items that are coming up but I apologize I know it's been kind of a, a long time coming as we've had to wait for development but that has been completed so just to give you an update on that and I've also got um, some information about a robust conversation on the list serves for auto renewal for the share consortium that is something that we've been discussing in our circulation committee and it's incredibly complicated because there are a lot of libraries that would really like to see it from a customer service perspective it would just it would make things easier for patrons to um, have their items just roll over if they have holds available and so but there are also drawbacks because we do not have a shared common loan guidelines or renewal guidelines and so because of that it, the it would add a layer of confusion and so we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of that at our next um, it's going to be follow right after our circulation meeting on August 8th at 11 a.m. so if anybody's um, really interested in learning more about auto renewal would like to hear that discussion I'd like to invite you all to attend via zoom and that will be um, again right after our circulation meeting on August 8th on Tuesday, August 13th, this um, we've been working with a vendor to bring a program security in small and rural libraries to our members. Right now it's being advertised at $98 per person. We're working with them to bring the price way down as well as offer it at our sites for free. And so I will be sending out um, additional information, but you might want to mark your calendars. Again, that's August 13th at 3, p uh, at 3 p.m. and that's through Library 2.0, Dr. Steve Albright. And so um, again, we'll send you out additional information on how you can either get a paid license to view that at your library um, on your personal computer or at your home at your personal computer, or if you'd like to send staff to IHLS to maybe view that um, for free. So and if you have any security for small and rural libraries. And are you talking about um, like online security or are you no. talking about in person security? in per person okay. physical yeah in person physical security especially when the, his example is the police response rate is going to be 15 to 20 minutes how do you protect yourself when you're there in a building by yourself so it is geared um, specifically for small and rural libraries but that being said I'm sure that there are going to be tips and um, suggestions for any library staff that would find valuable which location we're going to try to do it at all three okay. yeah 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 so again um, we'll be sending out information you'll uh, I'm sure we'll see a um, one of our email blasts as well as in the next coming coming newsletters for those anybody have any questions for me thank you okay. All right, and we'll move on to delivery. Um, Susan, would you like to come up? Or? Sure, take a hot seat. Although I, I'm fairly loud. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know that's a surprise thing, right? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I get it even closer. Oh, my. Yeah. I'm sure Julia will be not hesitating to let me know to tone it down. <clears throat> okay, delivery. Um, delivery is uh, moving right along. How do you like that joke, huh? Okay, really quick. We had a, um, our manager out of Carbondale Hub had found another opportunity. Gosh darn, but gosh, great for her. And so we took six to eight weeks to look at, we saw it as an opportunity to really evaluate what are our needs, what can we do, you know, an eye always to the budget, darn always an eye to that budget and we have um, started a new process uh, we are having an area manager and then two lead uh, 
supervisors. Ah, did I forget their title? I feel like it's something similar to that. Um, coordinator, thank you. I'm like, what was that? Lead delivery coordinators. So that being said, if you're in the Carbondale Hub, um, your new point of contact is uh, Linda Petty, who's out of our Edwardsville office. She's over our Edwardsville location hub as well as our Carbondale. Uh, the reality is, is that Carbondale, it doesn't diminish their importance. If anything, it really increases it because we cannot get to Cairo from Edwardsville. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So we need a hub in that area. Does not mean less service. We have Casey Parr, who is now the lead delivery coordinator down there in that hub. You can contact her, same extension as Arlana, which was extension 600. Um, you can email her at cparr, P-A-R-R, -R, at illinoisheartland.org. Um, or you can also contact Linda Petty. Uh, in our Edwardsville office, what we've done is we, our new delivery coordinator there is Leah, who was already with us, and she initially was our lead supervisor over the sorters. So she's there to kind of help out with other routine duties and, well, I shouldn't say routine because is there anything routine, um, duties and to help uh, Linda Petty be over both areas. Um, there should not be any change in service. If there is, please contact me, contact Linda or Casey um, because that's, we really don't think, we think this model's going to work. Uh, Carbondale currently does less than a third of the other two hubs, Champaign and Edwardsville. So it's a little bit different um, feel down there. Uh, we have gotten some new sorters. We've gotten some new drivers. Again, love to have feedback on that. Um, does anybody have any questions about that piece? Okay, grand. Uh, I'm sorry, should I pause longer for the online people, uh, Julia? I don't have anything. Okay, grand. Now, on to some more fun stuff really quick. And I hope I'm not stealing somebody's thunder because it's not technically delivery, but it is really <laughs> near and dear to my heart. We have uh, a Reaching Forward South survey that has gone out. Um, this is for the whole state. Even if you've never attended Reaching Forward South, we want to hear your thoughts. We want to hear what are you looking for in a conference. As you know, I'm sure you know, this last time we had it down in Carbondale, we had over 110 people come. That's yay, yay, because there's always been that, you know, that underlying current, ah, if we have it too far south, nobody will come. Well, no, people come. We're, we're looking for these opportunities. So I encourage everybody, please, please, please go out. It doesn't have to be one per library or anything. Fill out that survey by July 24th. Um, that will help direct where we're going this next year coming up. Um, at some level. I mean, well, at a lot of levels, but the location has kind of been chosen. That's going to be at Champaign this year. What we're, our, we're trying to rotate that conference around the state uh, at the I, uh, is it I share? Gosh, we got so much share. Is it I share? Hotel? Anyway, there's a hotel there. Feel like it's share in the title. That's where it's going to be. It's a really nice location. I hotel, that's it. No share. I hotel. <laughs> Sorry. So that's where it's going to be uh, located at this next coming up year. But we need to hear from people where and, and what you're looking for in that conference. The other really way cool thing is Think Outside the Barn. For those of you who don't know, Think Outside the Barn was originally from Rolling Prairie Library System. They had developed a grant and they got it where they are uh, reaching a group of people, which is farmers, uh, agriculture, that you don't always reach. You know, so what they do is that they hand out books at this huge farm progress show. In fact, it's like a permanent location now, one in Decatur and one in I'm feeling Iowa, Davenport, perhaps, to the left, <laughs> Quad Cities area. So there's a, and it uh, alternates every other year, and this year it's in Decatur again. So what we do is that we collect books, paperback books, and then people, we, we have volunteers that put stickers on there, and we hand them out free to the participants. And this has been going on for over 12 years, 
I can't remember exactly how long. I'm so sorry. Should have checked my facts. Uh, a little bit over 12 years. And people are actually looking for that booth. They get things for their grandkids, for their neighbors and things. And all we're doing is saying how great libraries are. Doesn't matter what kind of library. Doesn't matter. Illinois libraries. It does matter, Illinois. We say how great Illinois libraries are and how there's this huge network and we just share it. And people love, love, love that. And there's a great group um, of ladies who have got, or you know, people who have gotten together to organize all this. Um, so August 5th through the 21st, that's when delivery will pick up those books. We do ask that you put them separate into another, bless you, another box. There is a label on the website that will, you can print off to put on there uh, so that we make sure we do a collection um, and champ, well, we will champagne in our building there and that they just, they just love that. So we have a small collection there and then we start taking them over to Richland College and then from there they go ahead and take them over to the Farm Progress Show on a Sunday. Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me but that Sunday if you're looking for something really fun and eye-opening to do come on up to uh, Richland and help us pack up box trucks and take all the books over and we'll set up the booths the actual farm progress uh, is children is children's cookbooks adults okay. uh, horror okay. paperbacks yeah paperbacks I have a basement full that anybody can. I know when you said that earlier, I'm thinking. Did hmm. you bring a truck with you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> but be kind to your drivers, your delivery drivers. Just you know, under 40 pounds and just as small as you can get. That would be great, um, because it's additional things that they're putting onto their truck. But they've been, honestly, I think we all believe in this with the libraries, and uh, it works out really well. The actual um, Farm Progress show is August 27th through the 29th, in case you're interested in looking at this, seeing this. It is amazing. I think we have enough volunteers for the shifts, but I encourage you in two years, think about volunteering there. It is amazing, those reactions, interactions. And this is huge. This is like international. I mean, we spoke to people from Argentina. You know, they had a whole group of them coming up, and they were going to go see the John Deere factory and... You know, it's just loads of interesting people. It's just great. And uh, just to spread that word to the libraries. So that was my fun stuff. I and mean, not that delivery wasn't fun, but this is great. Susan, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Susan? You... <laughs> I, I have a question, Julia. First. Okay. Susan, will you share all your de your dates and stuff and those details because they're hard for, for me to remember too with Julia and then we can send them out to everyone who's attended this? Yes, that fab. Great. Thanks. Fab, Thanks, we will Julia. have those. Okay. Susan, Mary from Hainer, she said she would be interested in having the Reaching Forward South presentations being recorded via Zoom if possible. Uh, she'd be willing to pay a fee for watching the recordings, but sometimes it's not being able to leave the library for a whole day isn't easy. And I would say that's one of the questions on the survey is if you would be interested in um, attending online. And that's something that we did try to do this last Reaching Forward South. Um, the reality is connection and how many rooms and which programs are we going to do that with. So you, absolutely, Mary, that's a, a huge uh, concern of the Reaching Forward South Committee and they'll be looking at that. But that's a good, good suggestion. She said thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. We'll move on to membership. No. No. Get out. Sorry, hard for me. Okay, um, let's Thank start you. off by the next member glasses. matter is going and to be my one microphone. Oh, I talk awfully loud too. Susan and I are from I don't know the same gene pool, I guess. Uh, <laughs> So the next member matters is uh, September 2nd and uh, a shout out to our friends in Cham around Champagne because it's going to be in the Champagne office and uh, then September 4th through the 7th is the um, 
Association of Small and Rural Libraries and uh, or rural and small libraries. Uh, the IO Conference is that's uh, the Association of Illinois School Library Educators is October 10th through 12th in Springfield. October 22nd through the 24th is the ILA Conference, and that'll be in Tenley Park again. Um, and then October 28th through the 29th is the social, excuse me, the Social Justice and Public Libraries, a PLA symposium that uh, Leslie had mentioned, and that will be in Chicago. And then the day you've all been waiting for, November 7th, IHLS Member, Mat Member Day, and that's going to be at the Keller Conference Center in Effingham again. Um, and November 13th through the 14th is the Library Marketing and Communications Conference in St. Louis. And I believe, Tina, did you go to that last year? Yes, and we'll go again this year. You need to sign up as soon as you can. Yeah. It that's, does fill up. And what, uh, what would you say about? It was one of the most practical things I've gone to in a long time. <clears throat> I was able to start using it that day. It's really about marketing your services program. <laughs> library okay and it's um it's folks from libraries all across the u.s um a lot of them are not librarians per se but they all work in libraries okay so it's more people with marketing experience that yes. go okay and they're very willing to share okay it was and a fabulous conference do you think it would be as relevant for small libraries as larger or mid -sized? i think anybody could get something out of it okay Sounds like a good conference. I know people. For us, it wasn't too expensive because we just stay at home. We don't have to. Mm -hmm. We just travel day. It's only two days, I think, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. OK, so that's something. If you have the time and money, it's well worth considering going. Um, and then February 25th and 29th in 2020 is the Public Library Association Conference in Nashville, which is a drivable distance for most of us. Um, and so that's all for the uh, upcoming mark your calendar dates. Um, Can I also suggest something? Yes. Um, you know, we pay usually at our library mileage for people to go or travel. And a lot of times when it's in um, Chicago or Nashville or somewhere like, I think, uh, ARSL or ASRL will be in Kansas City next year, I think. Yeah, it's in yeah Burlington, Vermont this year, and Kansas City the year after. Yeah. So those are kind of drivable places for us. We'll rent a van because oh. it's a lot cheaper for us to rent a van for three hundred dollars and just pay for the gas. Oh yeah. Than it is to pay for an airline ticket or mileage, you know, per person. So um, I'm just throwing that out there for people to consider, suggest, uh, thinking about. That's a, that's a good idea, and maybe some of the uh, smaller libraries could uh, pool their resources together and, and do something like that. <laughs> yes, we could do a, uh, Cassie suggested uh, a party bus to PLA. <laughs> so, yes. And I think that's about all I have. Uh, I'd like to, Rita, do you have anything that the State Library would like to share with us? I, I'm assuming that was a no. I, I think you're muted, Rita. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So, do you have anything you'd like to share? No, not a thing. Nice to see everybody. <laughs> nice seeing you too. And we certainly appreciate the uh, money that the system's got. So, if you couldn't tell, we're very excited about it. <laughs> we're very happy. Glad you're happy all about it. <laughs> Okay, um, anybody have anything else they would like to add or say or? Okay, I, I guess that's I it. To reiterate. Okay. Come get my books. <laughs> <laughs> We're not fortunate enough to get an ISL construction grant, which will be starting this, this fall, not until after summer reading program. We are going to add 
a larger 100 person meeting room plus a smaller meeting room downstairs which uh, come back next time when this is done and we won't all be crowded into a half of into two-thirds of what our original meeting room was but in the meantime what we have to do is is empty out the basement and we have our book sale has always been down there so anybody who would like any books please come take boxes take cards take anything and everything and and if you can't if you can't do it today give me a call and i will arrange for any time you can come down and you can have whatever you want there's just have them okay <laughs> so free. Exactly. okay um, I guess that's it. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you uh, benefited from Sarah's uh, discussion. And I will get those things up on the website as soon as possible. They'll be on. Uh, they'll probably be links through the uh, L2 page. So, and I can also send them out to you as well if you're registered on L2. Okay. Uh, thank you and. That'll be it until September 2nd when we have our next uh, Members Matter. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. So if uh, we can do a quick uh, whip around and talk about, you know, what's happening at our libraries, that'll be good, too. And if you'd like to share, uh, those of you on Zoom, if, you would, if you're still there and you would like to share what's happening in your libraries, just uh, message Julia and she will share that with us, too. So let's start with the new director from Cahokia. <laughs> I appreciate that. Sure. And I will keep the theme of brief going um, because I am relative, well, very new. Um, truth be told, I'm just learning the library, learning the community, learning my staff, learning the board. We all know about boards. Um, no, they've actually been really great so far. I mean, um, truth be told, it's just a learning process right now for me. I don't got a lot much else to say about it except um, by next time, I should have a lot more because there's a lot of stuff I'm trying to work with the board on doing, which actually coincides with the presentation. I didn't realize that I was, I, it was called strategic planning. I mean, I knew all about planning, but what I was talking to the board about doing, I was not formally putting it in a document like that. So I guess now I need to go to the, my board meeting Monday night and start saying this is strategic planning. There you go. So that, that's what I got. Okay. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. Um, I'm from Millstock. Uh, our newest project is we're having a knitting night. Yay. We uh, have one of our people in town has offered to teach people how to knit. It is well, well intended. I make the most beautiful knots you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and they rip out easy. But that might be an idea. I was surprised how, how it's been embraced. It really has. Okay, thank you. Um, also, at Millstadt, we are getting a meteorologist to come in and put on a weather safety program. Um, he's from NOAA. They usually will send somebody out for free. We've just had a lot of freak weather, and I don't know the last time anybody's had a refresher. So, he's community safety. Good. I'm from Rosa, and we just recently started a Pinterest club. Had a lady come in and ask if she could do that, and like, yeah, go oh, for it. Cool. It's, been, it's been great. We'll do like that. That's very interesting. We all know my two cents. Come get my book. <laughs> Um, I'm at Six Mile, and the biggest thing that occurred for us recently is we, um, <laughs> I hate talking about this bad stuff, but we um, got a judgment in our lawsuit against Courting Luke John Contractors, Inc., who breached their contract with us, and we received a, a financial verdict from the jury, so. Hopefully good for you. Yeah, it wasn't as much as we had hoped, but... It's over. We know, and we have elevators that work. Yes. Oh, happy about that. Because we bought new ones and had somebody else to put them in, so they work. Um, so at Glen Carbon, we are finishing up our Project Next Generation grant, which focused on augmented reality and coding for kids. Uh, and I'm really excited. We just uh, got confirmation yesterday that we are one of the policemen in. Glen Carbon happens to be a big space travel freak. I say that in the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, and he owns one of the few um, reproductions of the original Paul 11 space suits. Oh, so, wow. Uh, through, so through the 16th through the 24th, the time of the actual Paul 11 trip, we're going to have his uh, spacesuit on display at the library, along with a couple of different models that he has collected over the years. And 
He's had them in different museums around the area before, and so they're going to be at our library for about two weeks. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I'm from Red Dad. We just finished our summer reading where the kids read a certain number of minutes, you know, like everybody does. Read the library, read your parents, read silently. Uh, and we offered groups of the free groups with it. So that went over well. I'm Tia. I'm in Evansville. Um, I'm also fairly new. I started May 28th. Um, and uh, I'm basically just purging right now. We <laughs> have materials dating back to 1902, so I'm going through and I'm taking stuff out. I've removed about 3,000 items in the last month. And yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm coming down. <laughs> I need books. <laughs> Give them to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anna. Yes. Yes. Anna. For the yes. back row, could you move the microphone back? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> oh, it's Oh. So in O'Fallon, we actually just passed or ratified our strategic plan. Uh, first one that we've had that I know of. So that's that's been exciting. And then we're in the process of just rolling that out, um, communicating that to staff, to the community, and then, you know, achieving or trying to achieve uh, the big lofty goals that we have. <laughs> we also, in conjunction with that, we just had a massive turnover with our friends of the library group, which has been very exciting. Uh, we had some very long termed board members on that group. So it's nice to have some fresh new faces with some new energy and some excitement part of that group. So yeah, things are moving in the right direction. Oh, me. Um, so I'm excited because we just got a storage unit. So <laughs> um, our meeting room can now be used as a meeting room and not a storage room. So I'm excited about that. And then Tomorrow, I am meeting with a U.S. Census Bureau um, partnership specialist, and we're going to discuss starting up a um, complete count committee in our area. Awesome. So, nice. working with um, local legislators and mayors and different things like that. So, hopefully, the census can get an accurate count. Our library district falls in a hard to count area because of a lot of Hispanic population and um, a lot of renters. So I'm excited. So that's happening tomorrow. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over. Um, oh, and I'm at Casey Bell. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> I'm Crystal from Harrisburg, and I will just um, give you a quick program idea that doesn't cost very much. We just did this Friday evening um, for the It's Showtime theme. We let the pets be the stars, and so we had a little pet show. Fun. Um, so we asked a vet, a local vet, a dog groomer, and a pet lover that we knew to be judges, invited everybody to bring their pets, and we had the chair set up where they got to walk down the middle, like the runway. And uh, the only thing it really cost was I bought like dog treats for the winners, and um, it was super cute. Everybody loved it. I think we had around 80 people there. So, Ooh, wow. Like 20 pets were entered. We had a goat. <laughs> and some Luna moth caterpillars were even entered into it, so it was really cute. Zero cost, or not zero cost, but like ten dollar cost. I yeah. could have brought it go. You could have. <laughs> I'm Felicia. I'm from El Dorado, um, and the biggest thing that we've just accomplished at our library is um, our new flooring got installed. We mm -hmm. have the waterproof vinyl laminate in our meeting room, which was previously carpeted and all kinds of stained. Couldn't do anything. Um, and then we got the carpet tiles um, throughout the rest of the area. But what's nice is behind our circulation desk is the vinyl laminate. So now we don't have to deal with the, the mm -hmm. chair mats and everybody tripping over those. So uh, it's pretty funny. Um, every, just about everybody that's come in, when they notice it, it's, the funniest thing about it has been when people walk in and they go, whoa. We, ha we have this uh, <laughs> welcome to the fabulous El Dorado Library sign that was in one of our floats a few years back. Someone came in, and he's one that's been coming in there almost daily and <laughs> never said anything about it. Comes in, and he goes, whoa, 
How long has this been up there? <laughs> I was like, oh, two years, Jim, but all right. <laughs> so anyway, and then as far as programs go, um, we actually, we have a crafting program that we do every other month. It's called Too Legit to Knit. And it's so funny oh my gosh. because people think it's knitting and I'm like, well, it could be, but it's not. We're too legit to knit. <laughs> so uh, what we did this last time, which was a ton of fun, I think we had, I don't know, around 15, 20 people, something like that. Um, we just got old, ugly bookends um, that we still need to mm -hmm. use um, and then acrylic paint and painted them. And I plan to go over them with a like a spray you know, like a spray that yeah that'll keep them there one of our board members who is super crafty super handy um he came in there and it's only an hour long program painted a complete scene from gone with the wind on one <laughs> oh my gosh. so i walked over there and said whoa check out bob ross over here <laughs> <laughs> so and my husband had painted a Batman thing that looked like a seven-year-old had painted. And he's like, oh, well, it's no Batman. But. So anyway, if you're looking for something to do, I mean, and you know, the acrylic paint I just got from Walmart for 50 cents. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, a really fun one to do. And it was, my four-year-old was doing it. And then we had, you know, people 60 plus. So it's a great program for everybody. Hi, I'm Gina from Mississippi Valley. I'm, I'm still relatively new, so I'm still learning all the things. But um, we did just go find free on our juvenile item. That was on July 1, so I'm super happy um, about that. They've been pushing for that for a while, and uh, I think it's, it's going to be a great start for find free anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> my wife said my two cents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a very, very busy so, June. Um, probably the biggest thing we've had going on is summer reading program, and we decided after some issues last year with prizes and behavior that we wanted to kind of bring reading back to summer reading program and try to get away from all of the little stuff that we were giving away that was really not very appreciated. Um, so this year we decided to uh, make, instead of individual goals, we've gone with a library goal. And when you came in the door out here, you can see kind of the results of that. Everyone is tracking their reading hours, but instead of achieving, you know, they're still getting their grizzly tickets and there's still going to be a drawing at the end for the Cardinals prizes. Um, but the, the library goal, if, we, if everyone collectively reads 3,500 hours, the library will be installing some items that will benefit the community. And for this year, we chose a coffee bar for adults, um, beanbag chairs for teens, and a Lego table. It's fun. And it's been well received. Our registration this year, last year, I believe, was under 200. And this year, we're over 600 already registered. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. have embraced it. Um, we've seen just a massive increase in adult registration. Yes. I think the adults were uncomfortable looking for individual prizes, but the yes. library goal Yeah, they said that. Great. We never knew what value there was because we didn't want all these little, you know, these little Trinkles. prizes that you were giving away by drawing tickets. So seems to... That's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's worked really well. When you leave, check it out. The, there are stars. They get a star for every five hours on our well, wall. Everybody gets to use it, so everybody <laughs> feels like they, you know, mm -hmm. instead of the chance for that. one room. Yeah. Cool. Julia, do you have anyone online? I do, I do. Uh, Susan from Heron. Um, she said they just received a grant from a local foundation and added new furniture. Uh, the furniture was from 1970. The additions oh included a children's ADA circulation desk and a teen lounge area. Uh, she is finishing up the monies with a community media center, which uh, she hasn't worked out all the details for yet, but will include job and resume resources, computer cooperative learning station, digital conversion software, and more. Uh, their Heron has history room just became a family search affiliate and is working on expanding genealogy. So that's wonderful. And 
Matthew from Newman. Um, they just got a bunch of new shelving courtesy of their local school's renovation. Uh, they will be able to expand their collection and rearrange the, their space to get everything in reach of our patrons. Oh, and Susan from Heron also said for our summer reading, uh, they also just had a Smokey Bear birthday party. IDNR came and did a great presentation. They had 75 plus in attendance. Smokey is 75. Oh. <laughs> okay, anything else? And that's all I have. Up. Okay, then I guess that's it. Um, am I forgetting anything? Nope. Okay, good. Now, um, for those of you who are here, we can go to lunch together if you would like. Um, I'm sorry, those of you who aren't here, <laughs> we'll enjoy it in your honor. How's that? <laughs> but come to come to Champagne, and we'll we'll eat together there. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.